it's not a walkthrough, playthrough, review, anything like that. It's just me playing the game badly, so you can see what it looks like. Okay then, this is Vector Wars. Those of you who were unfortunate enough to catch my live stream just before Christmas may be slightly familiar with it. I say slightly, you wouldn't have had much opportunity to get very familiar with it because the video quality was appalling. Frame rate measured in um, minutes per frame and the audio was questionable and uh, in the end I lost connection and that was that. But it was fun for me. I don't know about the rest of you, but let's have a looky. We've got different modes of this, story, arcade, blah, blah. I, I've only tried, I've tried arcade and story. Arcade is like three lives and then you're dead. Well, I didn't last very long. So we'll go for story because, actually, how far have I, I got up to here in the live stream? Are we going to look at, let's, okay. It's only letting us this far anyway. It won't let us go any further because they're locked because I haven't played them. So, whatever. We'll have a go. Yeah, I'll show it you from the start. Because why not? I find the loading times actually quite horrifying given that this is like loading from the hard drive on a modern, you know, it's it's on a PS4 for God's sake. It's not on a it's not on a PS1 or a Neo Geo CD. Uh, it's not full of lots and you know advanced textures or anything it's mostly vectors with there's probably some texture stuff going on here because you know these kind of things that's i don't know i don't know how they're done to be honest so you're in a vector based landscape i've forgotten most of the controls look at that cobra mark three from elite awesome uh yeah so we've got things like this, who are going to try and kill us. There are game elements in this game from many old school vector based games. Go away you unpleasant thing. What was that button? Oh, uh, that tilts. Okay, we've got... Uh, forgetting the button. There are... There are pickups, power-ups. That's a mini gun. Um, super rapid fire, you know, like small chain gun thing, you know what I mean. Um, but it does have bad barrel rise, so you can be pointing it at your target, but it's just going to... It's alright. It does the job. What is that? Uh, I'm, I'm, I was pausing because I could see a red thing, because I know there is a red tank around here somewhere. But yes, you blow things up and they leave a little glowing thing. And um, you pick it up and it's a, a score multiplier. That's kind of weird. I don't actually know what... I think we're some... What the hell? Where's that coming from? I think we're on foot. Because if you notice where I was going faster for a moment there, it's bobbing about like we're running. That's kind of funky. I had thought we were in a vehicle. But get, just... So, sort off. I don't know, maybe we're in a mech of some description. Don't know, haven't got a clue. If there, if there's a backstory and all of that lot, I haven't read it. Kind of don't care really, I'm, I'm, you know, backstories, meh. It's all about the visuals. Um, there's another one up there and we'll have that. There are other interesting weapons. Some of them are good and some of them are just rubbish. Um, combat shotgun my ass. You have to get really close to the target and generally it's not great. Reloading. Cool. Who's shooting at us? Oh, TIE Fighter. Yeah, there are there are many what's that? Oh god, there's a tank. You see there are elements like it, oh yeah. <laughs> Hellfire missiles. They're great. They're really good. Kind of semi-guided. Slight. I, I wouldn't say they're slightly guided. That's how I would describe them. Um, what's that? That's a 
combat shotgun, we'll just call it a shite shotgun, or it's a shite gun. We don't want it. Sometimes it's your only option, and it's better than the pea shooter you start off with, but it ain't great. Now we're back on the minigun, but we can change, yeah. It, it enables whatever weapon you pick up, but you can cycle through your weapons. Who's doing that? More of them. Um, I think the goal is kill everything, and once you've killed everything, you move on to the next round. Um, on some levels, there are other things that you're expected to do. Oh yeah, there are these funny little robots walking around and you're supposed to pick them up. Now, doesn't that just look like Walter from a very early Judge Dredd? I don't know who's shooting at me. Is it down... Where is that coming from? I can't see it. Could you see where that was coming from? I couldn't. Okay, we were a bit close to him. Alright. says you get all that funky writing comes up but it's really I struggle to read it it actually reminds me a bit of the writing that you get on um, Tempest no I was gonna say yes Temp Tempest 2000 or um, Lamatron it's it's kind of that psychedelic kind of thing. Okay, that that was a power cube that enables you to activate a, a, activate that. I don't know what that does, but it seems to be an objective. No idea. Go away, whoever that is. You have what? I don't know. Yeah, the writing is a bit Minter-esque, which is in some ways good and in some ways damned hard to read. It definitely wears its influences on its sleeve. I mean, that the, the, the primary influence here is Battlezone, obviously, but I love the references to other games. There, there are some Tron references in here sci-fi references like the little Walter type robot running around who uh, there's also an element of um, Robotron in that you are required to rescue the little geezers it might so we've got a we, I haven't even bothered looking at that there's a, that radar up on the top right there tells you where stuff is that's a pickup pickups are like little green spots on the radar we'll have that red and yellow triangles up there. I'm not sure what the yellow ones are. The red ones are definitely enemies. When you've got red things like that, it's hard to tell. Is that a piece of landscape or is it a... Is it an enemy? Yellow spot. Let's see what that is. And that geezer needs to just stop shooting at me. What the hell am I facing? Go away. Alright, yellow health power up. Yellow dots are... Well, that I guess. What's that? Not an enemy. It is an enemy. Cool. It's a dead enemy. We like those ones. They're the best enemies. Cross the bridge. Hello, there's something over there. No, wait, what is that? Green triangle. Okay, it's a pickup. So they're triangles when they're off the map. Alright, I get that. 
I'm figuring it out as I go along. I've only played this like twice, <laughs> once while I was doing the live stream. And uh, it's difficult to actually figure out what the hell's going on in a new game while you're also doing a live commentary and try trying to be entertaining, probably failing badly, but you know. People were polite and appeared to have to have fun. Or multiplier, we'll have plenty of those, please. Thank you and stuff. Ooh, yeah. Ah, oh god. What the hell? It's a bit violent around here. A bit. Sort off. God. Oh god, that was quite... You get hit by the blast. I, I guess it does you damage. Looking at the map, it's not often I look at the map. Oh, you can... Oh. Have I completed it or died? I clip? Oh, yay. There you go. Completed it without dying. Robo dude save, two of eight, power cubes collected, one of ten. Multiplier super bonus. Yeah, I like that. I like the curved image, uh, sort of replicating the, the effect of it being viewed on an old cathode ray tube. It's cool, it's also slightly tilted on here because the camera is maybe not quite straight and parallel and stuff with the TV, because we're doing it old school style because it's my channel. Loading. Long loading screen, probably edited to cut it down. Maybe. Yeah, okay. Alright. Uh, yeah, this one's... Uh, it's very green. There's a lot of these little robo geezers around. We don't have an. Oh, it's one of those shotgun doopers. It, this. It's not the hardest level. What's that? I mean, okay. Have that. See, the thing with this shotgun, you've got to be up close before it does anything, and that's a bit rubbish. We don't want to get close to them, they're not friendly. They, they don't... They don't... Offer you a warm welcome and a cup of tea. They shoot you in the face. And that's not nice. I mean, I've never been shot in the face, and I hope I never am, but I'm pretty sure it's not fun. And that's what they do. Gimme that. Okay. So we're just going to have to shoot them back. And we'll do that in the back if we have to. I don't care, I'm not proud. They're aliens. We'll do whatever's necessary. I don't know that they're aliens. They're, they're, they're damned unpleasant, that's what they are. Vector-based assholes. Can you imagine having a vector-based asshole? I don't know what that would look like, and I don't want to imagine. You can if you want to. I'm not going there. What's that? What's that? Oh, I know what that is. That's like a plasma electricity. What's it do for? It's not bad. There, that. It does that. I like that. Oh. God, probably a bit too close to that one. The controls on this lend themselves well to strafing. As they seem to call strafing these days, I would call it sidestep. Strafing to me is what like a, a Messerschmitt or a Stuka would do to troops on the beach at Dunkirk. That was strafing. But, you know words get used differently these days. I'm 
being messaged. Ah. Oh, we got one of those funny do for what's it's that you tread on and it does something that I don't know what it is, but we'll do it. Well, well, or we'll just run straight past. You have what? I uh, that. I still couldn't read it. These geezers, they, I can't decide, are they like from uh, Berserk or are they like from. Uh, God. Are they from Blaster? That Eugene Jarvis game that pretty much didn't really get released. I think one prototype hit the arcades or something. They're just being quite unpleasant. Go away, go away, go away. Yeah, there's a lot of them. What's all that? Couldn't read it. Don't really want that, but we'll take it anyway. Robo dude. Help. Plasma doofer, we'll have a plasma doofer. Actually, what have we got? Okay, we're still using the Hellfire rockets because they're the best. He says, as the little red geezer doesn't die. They seem to dodge quite quickly, so we'll go for. Not that. Yeah, chain miniguns seem to work better on the little red geezers. I guess it's. Wow. It would be nice if you could. Wow, holy. Not worry about locking on, but just like do a major strafing run and hold the barrel down so it didn't rise and just, you know, drive by. Chain gun drive by. That would be good for taking them out. But no, it doesn't seem to work. Shame. Plenty of power ups. That's what you need. There are levels like the next level where you don't get plenty of power ups and they're really quite difficult to get hold of. Come off. We've completed that level. We'll have a look at this one. This one's harder. I struggled when I played this one for the first time. I may struggle here. The difference now being I do know about the run control, which I didn't the first time I played it. So we'll see if I do a little bit better. Robo dude. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? This is going to be a stupid crappy... Oh no, it's a fireball thing, which is... interesting looks cool I don't think it's especially effective flying bad geezers I'm not sure that this is the really hard level or not there's one way you can f yeah you go into the water there is water where's that coming from sod off it's hard to see the red enemies when you you kind of got a I don't know if I've got a red force field, but while I've got this weapon, everything's red. Whoa. That probably hurt. I say probably, I didn't feel it. You know. What's that? A laser beamish thing. 
and whatever that is, we'll have that. Minigun, power cube thing. Might be a game cube used as a bonus pickup goofer. Robot geezer, I'm Walter, try me, that's what he said. I don't know quite what trying him entailed, but that was like his little you have a sign on him or something, or did he just say it? Can't remember, I just know. I relate that, that phrase, with him. I'm old, what do you want? You geezers, die. I was thinking my weapons were weedy. I think it's just that these geezers are a bit hard. Don't know what that said, couldn't read it. Going after that, don't know what it is. Either going to grab it or kill it, or both. Crappy shotgun. What weapon have we got here? Oh, I like this one. That's a nice little beepy noise, isn't it? That's like a alien lander on Defender. Don't know what that did, don't care. Yeah, these, th those little funny lander doofers do have a tendency to swarm, which makes them quite a pain in the ass. And this, yeah. Oh dear. I don't think we've got the best weapon for them. Definitely don't think that's the best weapon for them. Oh God. Here we go, it's it's Megatron Cross Mechquake. Oh, okay. And I know at least Rob Geigerpunk knows what I'm talking about. Big jobs. Yep. I didn't actually see it when you said that at the time, but while I was, oh God, oh we've fallen in the water. You can do that here, you can go into the water and while I was live streaming this section just appeared as a big indistinct blue glow and no one could see anything except me. Which wasn't really what you want in a live stream. I mean there's not a lot down here except power cubes. Not much point in coming down here other than I guess if you wanted to activate every single thing that you can activate with power cubes. I kind of don't care. I don't, oh dear. I don't know to what extent it affects your game if you do activate all of those doofers. I've lost the there it is. Come here, you crappy ladder. It's bloody difficult to, there we go. And then move? No, we fell back in. I don't... <sighs> Alright, we're moving. They're all just sitting there waiting for me. Because they're assholes. It's like... Sp I was say spawn camping, but obviously I wasn't spawning there. But you know what I mean. They were camping. That's fine in Battlefield, but... Lots of fun of it here. What does that say? Read that for me, please. I can't. Where are we going? Then? That way? Yeah, we'll go that way. Some little funny tank thing. That is not a good time to reload. Oh, and you. Yeah. It is good when you've got all of those things bunched together. If you take one out, they uh, they all get caught in the blast. Ass. I died. There you go, I'm gonna stop there. Because we could go on for ages. That is Vector Wars. It's on the PS4, it costs $7.99. You can get it on Steam for a lot cheaper. Was it like $1.99 or so? I don't know. It was on some kind of sale offer thing. Um, yeah, it dumps you kind of back in where you left off. 
I love it. I think it's great. It's, you know, it's a nice affordable game that offers old school arcade thrills and a beautiful visual that I really like. I, I just think it's it's right up my street. Great. Love it. Spend, will spend, when I get the time, quite a bit of time playing it. So, uh, yeah, that's about all I've got to say about that. Thank you for watching. Take two, because take one was absolute gibberish. Today's question for Q&A is from Electric Adventures. Tony, link to his channel down there. He asks, for Q&A, favourite game or computer store back in the day, and what caught your interest the most in the store, even if you never ended up getting the system back then? Okay, there are two shops that come to mind. Um, both in Milton Keynes. The first one, just because it opened first, or was open first, um, it was the first place I knew of that actually sold video games. Uh, it was, well I think it started out as Taylor and McKenna, and then became Beatties, or was it the other way around? One of those, anyway, I'm not even sure what the shop is now, it definitely I think it became a Halfords after that, and then something else after that. <sighs> Don't know. Um, anyway, recollections of that place. I mean, it was a toy shop, but it had video games upstairs. And it was a good toy shop. Um, especially in its earlier incarnation. It, was, it, seemed, it seemed to have a better variety, I think, when it was Taylor and McKenna. Um, they had Atari 2600, obviously. But then they got ColecoVision, which was interesting, in television, which was not quite as interesting, but still caught my eye, and both were... Look. Great. Bear with me. Right. I've got no idea where I got to, because I just had my landlord on the phone there. <laughs> Silliness. I had to go and check some things for them, because stuff. Not a problem. No, I'm not in trouble. Another tenant having problems, which I helped out with. People. <laughs> anyway, where the hell did I get to? Can't remember. Talking about Taylor and McKenna, Beatties. Um, it was a toy shop. Yes, I remember. Upstairs, Atari 2600, Mattel in television, ColecoVision, all of which I found really interesting. Did th and they had the Philips uh, G7000 as well, which was not so impressive. In fact, it was like, even though technologically it's more advanced than the Atari 2600, um, it, there was one. The, the, there was no development team. There was one person programmed all the games for that. Um, and didn't have the development budget all the time or anything like that. So while they did a very good job, they they didn't impress in the way that they could have had they had the budget and the time and the support from Philips and all of that kind of thing. Blah. Um, but the thing that they had, the thing about Taylor and McKenna that grabbed me was they had Vectrex. And... Vectrex was an amazing system and it was like if there was one there I had to go and watch. I never got to play it back in the day. I watched I watched other kids playing it because there was always a crowd around it and there was always like the, the hard kid was dominating the, the, the pad and it was like you you had no chance. Um, there were some... Milton Keynes is people there, kids there in particular uh, they were then and they were when I left. Obnoxious, really. <laughs> and uh, whoever was artist dominated and you didn't get near the thing. So I would watch and I was impressed. And many, many, many years later, I have a Vectrex. If you were watching the live stream the other night, just before Christmas, I did switch from playing Vector Wars to uh, I put me Vectrex on and played a couple of games on that before I lost my connection. And that was fun and great, and I really enjoyed playing on there again. I don't turn it on very often because it's old and 
you know, these things die, and I don't want it to die, so I, I don't use it a lot. Yeah. Taylor and McKenna, Beaties. That's the first one. The second one is, um, it was a computer shop, though they did do some console games as well, called Softly, which I thought was a cool name, because Softly, like, software, whatever. Anyway, um, they they started in like the 8-bit days they had. I, I got my Acorn, Electro, Acorn Electron software from there a lot. I'm not sure what they what sort of stuff they had to begin with. Certainly they had Spectrum software, they had BBC software. Not sure how much Atari stuff they had. I don't think they had like 2600 cartridges. They certainly had Mega Drive cartridges when that came out. I think. They had Amiga stuff when that came out, um, and it was it was an enthusiast shop. It wasn't a big, it wasn't some corporate thing. It wasn't some chain store or franchise or whatever. It was just an independent computer shop run by an enthusiast who knew a bit about computers at that time. Um, I think the BBC was probably his thing. Could be wrong. It was a s small shop. It was probably, in shop terms, very small. A little bit bigger than this room, really. Um, a little bit of software for quite a few systems is how I would describe it. Spectrum, obviously, very well covered. Commodore 64, that sort of thing. Um, it eventually shut down and became a forbidden planet and I went there a lot as well. That was at the time that I was buying Marvel comics. Still got those in down there. One day I, I kind of want to put them in front of the camera and say, look at this lot. Yeah, so uh, softly, really, really good. I was really quite sad when that place shut down. Couldn't compete with the likes of... Um, who was who was dominating for a while? Dixon's in Milton Keynes, at least Dixon's and um, well, I mean W. H. Smith and Boots were selling stuff for a while when things were really peaking, and John Lewis. You you could basically buy computer games and console games everywhere, and consoles came to dominate, and so an enthusiast computer shop was not what people wanted at that time and it just shut down. Shame. I really liked it. Didn't buy consoles or computers from either of them actually, I just bought software. Um, bought computers back then and consoles in fact mainly from uh, Dixon's and John Lewis because they tended to have them in stock. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't say cheap. They weren't cheap. But you know, uh, Amigas. I bought. I bought them from Dixon's and John Lewis. I bought one, two, whatever. Um, I didn't have a credit card or a debit card or anything like that back then to do mail order, and I certainly didn't trust mail order anyway. Um, so it was like I had to go to shops to buy me computers and consoles and things, and it was largely Dixon's and um, John Lewis didn't really like them that much. Well, Dixon's was a nice place to look around and in the way that you look on Amazon now, you, you and then see if you can get it cheaper somewhere else, <laughs> which usually you can't unless you're buying from China. Yeah. Okay, I'm waffling now. Um, if you've got a question you'd like answering in a video like this, leave your question in the comments below. Begin with for Q&A so I know not to just answer it in the comments. And thank you for watching. So, is he starting some kind of cookery show? It says something here about having pastry on. Pies? I like pies. <laughs>